thanks to each of you for your time and attention. And, and Sanjay has already mentioned that each time that I'm here, we change the name of the conference, which I think is good and very apt, from GIS to geospatial. And of course, the thing about geospatial technologies is they're not an end in themselves, but a means to an end. And GeoSmart is a very appropriate way to describe that objective. So an end in particular that I'm illustrating here is that the Pope came to our headquarters city of Philadelphia last fall, and we created this 3D model of Philadelphia as our company's pro, pro bono contribution to having that go well. It was done with just digital photography that I'm going to explain. We call that advancement reality modeling, and I think the convergence it enables is the convergence of geospatial technologies with engineering technologies in one frame of reference. In this case, it also enabled a successful visit of the Pope from the reality mesh created in this process. We were able to engineer the infrastructure that made the Pope's visit successful. So our company, Bentley Systems, is about advancing infrastructure. The end there is to improve the quality of life as in India. This is our portfolio of software offerings, which thank you for taking advantage of. And you might say it starts with, each project starts with, an infrastructure project starts with project delivery based on our applications, and then our project-wise collaboration environment during project delivery, and then our asset-wise environment for smart infrastructure operations. And so we began with the engineering side of things and are ranked by the ARC benchmarkers, number one in many respects of engineering and plant design software that's relevant for your quality of infrastructure and life in India. But today we are also ranked number one in the world in asset operations and maintenance reliability software for improvement of the services the infrastructure delivers. And we're very proud of our team in India. It's over 350 colleagues. That's the second largest in the world to our headquarters in the United States. 250 of our colleagues here, you could say, make in India. We're exporting their work to the world. And it happens that 30% of our software users in India are also part of global firms contributing and working on projects outside of India, and I might say those value engineering centers in India are now ranked by owners to produce work that is superior in engineering quality to that which is done elsewhere. Something we endeavor to do as Bentley Systems, we say that infrastructure sustains our economy and our environment. We can do both at the same time if we sustain the infrastructure professions. Our contribution is an annual year in infrastructure conference and a yearbook where we collect together the projects nominated for our Be Inspired awards. And this year, 63 projects were nominated from India. Four were finalists, two were winners, and I'd like to salute them to start with. This one by MWH Global was a renewables power plant in the UK. MWH, along with designing and constructing, will also operate and maintain that plant. So the best of technologies was used here in India for that. Uh, Tata Consulting Engineers did this uh, project in India, which is meant for 100 years sustainability on a very difficult site using the best of technologies and engineering for that purpose. And then AECOM were the master planners, and, and we're glad to see their program management work, in this case, pulling together an infrastructure engineering portfolio. And by the way, we help AECOM distribute its work as a global firm, helping virtualize their talent, you could say, for sake of projects of this scale 
that involve AECOM engineers from everywhere, and perhaps Professor Jane is going to say more about projects like this, but this project was the largest greenfield smart city, and it was all about bringing together converging geospatial with various engineering technologies and took full advantage of our portfolio in the engineering of the utilities and the information management required and gave credit to technologies for helping improve the design in this respect. And in particular, in bringing these technologies together, interoperability and information mobility is of the essence and we were able to help them. Now in this project by AECOM India, which is here in the Delhi region and is about water, the detailed design was the project here and involves determining that for optioneering and improving the choices in all the infrastructure in this 10,000 acre project, it was possible to advance in terms of precision at the same time as the geospatial context. So when we say BIM, this project involved BIM, as AECOM put it, our definition is that BIM is about, at one and the same time, better project delivery and also better asset performance once delivered. And better project delivery is accomplished, I am, through greater breadth of information mobility and greater asset performance, better asset performance, I am, through greater depth of information modeling, and we endeavor to advance both of those at the same time. In this convergence of our industries between geospatial and engineering, we work on not only realizing infrastructure assets, but operating them to advantage. But it starts with, and our company started with design modeling, but has gone on in terms of depth to analytical modeling and construction modeling, all of which are essential. But ultimately, the goal is the performance of infrastructure assets. And a case in point of bringing it all together, for instance, is this project in England for Highways England, where now bringing together in geospatial context the linear referenced network the network events management, the capital projects. And for us, this new work, which replaces 17 separate systems at Highways England for integrated asset management, is about a new kind of class, if you like, which is in their operations and roadworks to make sure that the time of shutdown of the roads is minimized and coordinated. But, but in putting all that together, if I introduce this term reality modeling, how could that span and help us converge and connect the information and the processes from project delivery through asset performance? And as I see it, the key is what I would call geo-coordination. So everything that engineers do with our software knows its X, Y, and Z coordinates in the world the operating assets of the world share that same reality, if you like, the virtuality and the reality come together in geo-coordination. So the crux of this breakthrough, and I agree with Mohan Reddy who said, we're limited only by what we can imagine, that's increased on our part through a technology we acquired and have now integrated into the work of geospatial professionals and engineers it originated in France. So here is Paris in a geo-coordinated representation from the lowest level of detail you see here in the same continuous reality mesh model of a size that could not be surveyed or scanned in any other technology. This was produced from ordinary digital photography and combining aerial photography and street level photography. Photography, For instance, we could navigate in this model down to the level of the detail we saw, and then here is our office in Paris. 
So bringing together the continuous scale is possible when you go beyond point clouds. Point clouds are useful, but they're dumb and they're large and they can't link information together as we can do in the geometric con uh, context and frame of reference in which engineers already work. So reality modeling is about using ordinary photography to create 3D mesh representations of reality. So here is an infrastructure example. This is a substation outside Paris in 286 images from a drone and then supplemented by 180 smartphone or camera shots from the ground. This reality mesh was produced and then down to, the, so that by the way is a few minutes of surveying if you like and using the drone which I believe is going to be the par a part of every maintenance and operations fleet and then they took some additional photos to get down to the tag and nameplate level for asset performance of this substation. Now the thing is that this reality mesh is then produced without any interface by our software so that then when the engineers would engineer an improvement to this infrastructure, in this case a new transformer, so here's the Bentley substation application. We work in 3D and 2D together now, engineers do. But this is in MicroStation, our platform now for engineers, that reality mesh is the context for the engineering and we would here introduce the transformer and its catenary connections in the very geospatial context produced here and this is a substation in Paris so while we're retrofitting it with this transformer why wouldn't we harden the infrastructure with uh, fences and lighting for additional security and again here the engineers are working in the environment created by the continuous surveying made possible by the drones on site in that infrastructure fleet. This example, and credit to Aerometrics here, is continuous surveying during construction. So here again from drone flights, and we're not seeing a drone flight, we're seeing an interface to look at the changes in construction status from one flight to the next. Can you imagine an interface where you could go back and forth and on the one hand compare what was done in, in construction to what was planned, but also compare that to the actual 3D engineering models for assuring the project performance. And I understand that in India very recently, the railway minister where we here would be talking about his decision to use drones to ensure the construction progress on railway projects in India. But it goes beyond this notion of continuous surveying construction during operations, a safe way to do inspections and would not require shutting down the road would be, would be with drones. But here, because we can reduce the imagery to a reality mesh, it's possible to say where you're looking and you see a problem, go back to the reality mesh created from previous drone flights to look at the changes over time. Another capability that drones can do, they're not limited to photography, this is thermography, thermal imaging, which can be mapped into and immersed with the 3D model of that plant during operations to keep it reliable. Here's a case of continuous surveying taking place where the example is where there's erosion and potential for worse erosion. And here again, photography alone can create a mesh coming right into efficiently and measurably into an engineering environment where the changes from one continuous survey to the next can be observed. So with reality modeling, there's no need for specialized equipment or specialized crews. And you can even imagine embedding cameras to capture continuous surveying so there is always the context. 
and here to show that the reality model is a 3D geometric model in context, you could, for instance, consider resilience and inundation. So the geo-smart infrastructure advancement as we converge the geospatial technologies with engineering technologies, start with this context capture before the project starts. Then we do the engineering in context of what we've observed from the photography, continuously surveyed now. I think that's the biggest stimulation to our imagination, when surveying is not occasional and special, but when we can do it continuously, when inspections can be interactive, for instance, to look at integrity management over time. It's all made possible through 3D geo-coordination because now the reality model can be the natural immersive interface to capture and navigate all of the information during asset management through immersion. So I see reality modeling as a breakthrough in this convergence corresponding to the new name of the conference here. So what if in GeoSmart you would have in mind a smart nation? So this project in Singapore is a winner in government in our Be Inspired competition this year. And Singapore talks about being the first smart nation. In, in their case, they don't have land, but they have space. So 3D for planning above and below. And they have many uses for the 3D reality models of Singapore and many constituencies expecting and taking advantage of that. And we at Bentley Systems are big supporters of the OGC and the combining the abstraction as Singapore is doing of the semantics, the connectedness of what they're surveying and bringing that together in our Bentley Map Enterprise environment. This is the Marina Bay iconic building in Singapore. It happens that it was itself in its design stage a winning project in 2010 and be inspired. So the digital engineering models exist and can be referenced and geo-coordinated with the reality models in Singapore, which Singapore is bringing about through our technologies. Now, what about an example here in India? So the Nagpur Metro at its planning stage has already undertaken a reality modeling survey, and this was done from drones. The capture company had one week of training and was able to produce this reality mesh model, which then served as the context for this notional imagining and presentation of the Nagpur Metro. The improvement in infrastructure that we've been talking about by applying these geospatial technologies as they converge, and which will improve your quality of life in India. Well, I'm going to conclude with going back to Philadelphia. So, the engineer would start a project in Philadelphia now by seeking what contextual information is available and our software will go out to determine what public domain data such as terrain models and imagery is available if we have in mind to do a new infrastructure improvement in Philadelphia and, and bring that in and that looks rather useful but similar to the way we've been working, let's go and discover that a reality mesh has been created for Philadelphia, as we know it was, and here use that 3D model right in our engineering environment. So this is Bentley Concept Station, where at the stage now of imagining an additional roadway and bridge in Philadelphia, the engineer will work directly in this reality mesh captured by the geospatial technologies. Again, ordinary photography in this case. We can lay out a notional new road and new bridge, and the design development, the detailed engineering, will immediately follow in Bentley's open road designer 
So this is a, a cumulative level of detail being produced. But as we might wish here in India, where we would be able to notionally explore what infrastructure improvements are possible, and especially for roadways and bridges, now to be able to, if you like, enliven that proposal here with digital nature, and we can even simulate changes in the seasons and so forth here. But really what we'd like to know is, is it feasible? Uh, what will it cost? So if, if in the concept here, we're able to explain and compellingly communicate what we context captured, but the software will also go on to estimate the costs of what's been conceptioneered here, if you like, and present an estimate of the cost and details of the cost to determine the suitability and feasibility. So as we converge the geospatial and the engineering technologies, I think we're at this point of imagining that all being at the key and the advancements in hardware are very essential when we talk about connecting things together in the industrial internet of things. It is the digital engineering models that provide the digital DNA for what we're building and operating for the advancement of infrastructure and quality of life in India. So please come to talk to our Bentley colleagues about how to help more in applying that for GeoSmart India. Thank you.